Welcome to the Raising Smart Kids podcast. I'm your host, Yang Pratt, and each week we'll explore ways in which the arts can help you raise a smarter kid. I'll be sharing ways the arts can propel your child's learning and interviewing top artists, educators, and entrepreneurs. These guests will share why the arts are so very important to your child, along with actionable ideas you can easily implement into your already busy schedule. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast here on iTunes and share us with a friend. For extra tips on raising smart kids, head on over to artsmartparenting.com and click on the live tab. Welcome back to the Raising Smart Kids 2.0 podcast. You're listening to episode number 73, and I'm your host, Yang Pratt, and it's my honor to be your guide on this journey into parenting through the arts. Now, if you're new to me or to the show, welcome. I am so thrilled that you found us. For the past 16 years, I've been helping parents just like you raise smarter kids through the arts at my Performing Arts Academy. Last weekend, we celebrated the end of our 16th season with a showcase and a celebration to really commemorate and highlight the accomplishments that our students had achieved over the past 10 months. As we head into season 17 now, I realize how truly blessed my life is. Not only do I get to work with students every day to help them uncover and unleash what I I like to call their superpowers, but I get to help their parents to understand how the arts can really make an impact on their kids' lives and how their lives can be transformed positively by incorporating the arts and helping their kids learn through the arts and really to embrace those superpowers, not only in their everyday life at home, but in their academics as well. So I'm recording this episode on June 21st, which happens to be summer solstice here in North America. And today is the longest day of the year. And even though we are just kicking off our summer break here, it's been about two weeks since the kids have been out of school. After today, the days are actually gonna get a bit shorter until the fall when we experience winter solstice. So definitely take advantage of these longer days. And I wanted to give you a little bit of background on solstice. I was doing some research on what solstice is and kind of where it originated. And here's what I found. The word solstice is really two Latin words that are kind of put together. Sol, S-O-L, meaning sun, in, and sister, S-I-S-T-E-R-E, which means to stand still. So the summer solstice really marks the longest day of the year, and it looks like the sun is basically standing still in the sky, lending to the long hours that we have to enjoy today. So today's episode is really inspired by solstice and summer, and as we're in summer, things tend to change with respect to schedules and the pace that we are accustomed to through the school year being very highly scheduled. A lot of those things, at least in my case, fall away, and I really get to spend some extra time with my kids doing things one-on-one that I wouldn't get to do with them when they're at school all day. So I really appreciate being able to to take the time and learn more about them and discuss things are happening in their lives and learning about what's important right now. My kids are going to be 11 next week as well as 14 the week after that. So certainly the time I have with them is precious and I know they're going to be heading off to college and into the big wide world all alone very soon. And I want to make sure that I'm equipping them with some great life lessons that we can enjoy this summer. So here are seven activities that you can do today or if you're so inspired this weekend at a solstice party, the rest of the summer or even beyond. So here we are. I'm going to be putting a link to all the sites that I looked at 
while I was researching this episode, so you can click and see some visual images for the ideas that I'm going to share with you today. All right, activity number one is to dance around a maypole. In ancient Sweden, there was a midsummer tree that was decorated in each town. The villagers would dance around it, and in the UK, they call these maypoles. So you can also make a maypole by attaching garlands or flags or even toilet paper to the trunk of a tree or a nearby park. You can wrap several strips of ribbon around a tree and attach, attach them to the bottom of the trunk. Then you can have your kids and friends dance around the pole while unraveling the ribbons. A couple of summer, uh, summers ago, a dear friend of mine actually set up a maypole in her yard and the kids thoroughly enjoyed being able to dance over and under and making beautiful creations on this long maypole they had set up in their backyard. So if you have not done this activity already, it's definitely one you could try and grab some simple tools and, and implements around your house from yarn to ribbon to even toilet paper. So go out there and make your own maypole. And I would absolutely love to see any of those creations. And you can post those over on our, in our Facebook group at Raising Smart Kids 2.0 or over on our website at artsmartparenting.com and visit the page for episode number 73 and you can post those there as well. All right, activity number two is to create a protective garland to ward off the evil spirits. Now, in pagan times, the summer solstice, or midsummer, as it was called, was a time for magic, and the people wanted to protect themselves against the magic, so they would often go out and find herbs and flowers, especially St. John's wort, which would have the ability to ward off some evil spirits and make garland to, to wear around their neck. If you don't have any herbs available at your disposal, you could always grab some some flowers that are blooming from the dandelions to maybe something you have in your garden and create your own garland to wear around your neck. And number three is very similar to this and this is to create a flower leaf garland or flower garland for your head. So if you're going to be throwing a solstice party, you could whip up one of these for each of your guests or use it for the kids to create their own beautiful wreaths to wear around their head. There really is something magical about being able to pick something live out of the yard, especially if they're, they're a little bothersome like those dandelions get to be. Um, you can have the kids pick those and sort of weave those together in their own fashion to create something that they can be proud to wear today for solstice or for the days going forward from now. Activity number four is to create a sundial. If you have a potted plant or something you can put a stick into and help your kids to understand what a sundial is and how in ancient times they used that to be able to tell time in the passings of the days. It's really quite fascinating and there's some interesting science and stories around sundials. And of course, you probably don't wanna tell your kids that you're teaching them or they're learning or using their brains in summer, but it definitely is one that is filled with lots of learning activities and opportunities for you and your kids. You can get, definitely get as creative as you like when you make your sundial and make a beautiful one, you know, grab again things you have around the house. There's no need to go to the store and purchase a bunch of things. Grab something that you have readily available. At our house, we tend to often have a lot of empty pots for plants and some potting soil. So that would be something you could use as a base and then find a stick or even a short fishing pole rod and put that in the middle and put it out in the sun and have your kids really keep track of the passing hours throughout the day. Okay, number five is to grab some yarn any color, maybe summer inspired colors, as well as some sticks that you gather that are lying loose on the ground at a local park or in your backyard, or maybe your neighbor has lots of trees that you can borrow some of their sticks off of their yard. And you're gonna place those together in the X pattern and add an extra one, I think six sticks total or four sticks total, and you're literally gonna weave this in and out 
and really create that beautiful sunburst pattern that I know when I was a kid, I used to do a lot of those in school. It seemed to be a really easy activity that our teachers would let us indulge in during class time and as well as in arts classes. And even through Girl Scouts, I was able to make some of these beautiful radial sundials here or, or the uh, sunbursts anyway, sorry. Um, and you can, again, grab whatever you have around the house and you can hang this proudly in the backyard or your kitchen window and really be reminded of those special memories and times you created intentionally with your child this summer. All right, number six, and this is a fun one. I don't know about in your area, but we've had an abundance of butterflies and hummingbirds lately. And we just put a hummingbird feeder on our back porch. And I've been amazed at how many hummingbirds are coming to visit this. You know, and there's something, I guess, about that red water in the hummingbird feeder that really attracts them. And likewise, you can do one for butterflies. So again, hop on the internet, spend a few minutes to teach your kids how to find things like creating butterfly feeders and hummingbird feeders for your back porch. And again, this is something that's going to live on past one day. Every time you look out onto your back porch and another visitor, another hummingbird or another butterfly comes to see you, you can again think back about those memories you've created with your kids and the time that you were spent, you were spent creating with them. And last but certainly not least is idea number seven, and this is to create a bonfire. And fire has a lot of science behind it. So again, you can infuse some learning into a very fun activity. But again, you may not want to present this activity to your kids as we're gonna have a science lesson today, but really saying something to the effect of let's celebrate summer, let's celebrate solstice by creating a beautiful bonfire. As the bonfire is burning, you can talk about the different colors it creates, and again, the science behind that. You can talk about temperatures that fires reach. There's a lot you can discuss with them and infuse learning into a fun summer activity. And of course, when you're building a bonfire, something you're gonna to wanna to discuss is fire safety. Especially if you're out camping and you have an open flame, you definitely want to teach your kids how to properly extinguish that flame so that there's nothing that um, can go on further from that, from that area. So there you have it, my friends. Seven ways that you can celebrate the longest day of the year today, summer solstice, or even just any day this summer as we move into the fall here in just a few weeks. So I will catch you all very soon on another episode of the Raising Smart Kids 2.0 podcast. Now you can join the conversation over on Facebook at Raising Smart Kids 2.0 and join the discussion, ask questions that you have, and engage with other parents who are learning to use the arts to help them to raise smarter kids. Okay, my friends, go out there and enjoy summer solstice and make it the best one yet. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in to the Raising Smart Kids 2.0 podcast. To really accelerate your ability to unleash your child's superpowers and raise smarter kids through the arts, we're creating loads of new resources, ways to connect, and ways to celebrate your successes. You can join our free Facebook community by visiting the Art Smart Parent com or just search up Raising Smart Kids 2.0 on Facebook. I look forward to seeing you inside our community.